all of the above, but somehow we can still miss that mark of honoring God in a weakness. And quickly aside note, thank you, Sister Tyrell, because I think this word is for me today because I have putting off some stuff. So. <laughs> okay. So um, yeah, so he said, what is more pleasing to the Lord, your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to his voice? So he's saying obedience is better, obedience and submission is better than offering fat around. So I can say, Lord, well, I went to church. So you know, I'm, I'm serving God, so I'm on the praise team, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And at the end of the day, God's like, that's all cool, but that's not exactly what I asked you to do. So, and if we skip down to 15, uh, 24, Saul actually admitted to Samuel in verse 24 that he disobeyed the instructions of the Lord's command because he was afraid of people and what they demanded. Mm -hmm. So basically, Saul, and he was anointed king of Israel at first. So. Saul basically like compromised the voice of God because he was afraid of the opinions of people. He was afraid of what people may have thought about him and all types of stuff. So basically he put himself in jeopardy and his right relationship with God because of what other people may have looked or said. But at the end of the day, we never want to do that. We never want to jeopardize our personal relationship with God because someone else may not accept it. A person, human being may not accept it. So as I said, the modern society, us compromising, Spoke on social media. Let's go with social media. Whatever we may like post on social media, whatever our words may say, we will be held accountable for each word that we say. Whether it's wrote on social media, we still all will be held accountable. So, if, like I said, it may be pleasing a few followers. You might get a few likes. You may get a few, you know, I know that's right, girl, all this other stuff. But if it's dishonoring God, what jeopardy is that doing for the kingdom? And I want to say we are made like in his image, we created to be made in his image. We are the salt of the earth, the, the light of the earth, the city on top of the hill. That how we portray our God truly matters. It matters. We may not think it does, but it does. You never know who may be watching you. And I always say you don't even know who's watching you, who eyes of God are watching you through. I say it like that. Uh, and that's true. We all fall short of God's glory. We all are perfect <coughs> sinners. We all fall short. We daily, but our goal should never be to intentionally fall short of his glory. We shouldn't try to fall out just knowing that he's going to forgive us. doesn't give us a license and give us a right to do to be in obedience, disobedience. Amen. So, um, I want to go ahead and say, so truly basically stand for the fire for God in our youth and our maturity to stand close to God and being reminded that our lives are not our own. We don't own our own lives. I know it may get easy get caught up in our careers and caught up in our own lives, but we cannot miss the will and the call of God that he's placed on our lives for him, to give him glory. Um, and even, I just want to touch on the scripture for the luncheon that they put on here. Every good thing given, every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of light, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. James 1, 17. So we know that all good things What part of what got Saul in trouble, because in another verse, uh, previous verse, I didn't get a chance to read, uh, Saul went to the town of Camel to set up a, mo a momentum, a monument, excuse me, to himself. Then he went to Gilead. We can get caught up in our success and our accomplishments, and we start to put ourselves on the pedestal. We start to put ourselves on the mo moment, monument, and we, we throw God in there. Thank God, you know, praise God, but actually be putting ourselves on the pedestal. We have to be careful of doing that and kind of like humble ourselves because nothing that we have belongs to us. Nothing that we have, we have not gotten it on at all. If it wasn't for God's grace, we wouldn't have it. Uh, so I just want to kind of just encourage all of us, including our young babies, and I just want to say they did an amazing job with their praise. I pray that they continue to keep doing it.
caught up, like I said, and building our own life. But tomorrow is not promised to any of us. As we see, even our youth, like our youth is passing away faster than our, our mature. So tomorrow is a promise, and I don't want any of us to take for granted the time that God has given us, the purpose, the gift that he's given us, to ultimately just give him the glory, to just worship him. Because we're not, we're not doing ourselves a disservice if he just continues to just live for us. Like, he didn't create us for, to just live for ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to go ahead and pray. Ready, Pat? Yeah.